If you uh, see this as a pathway, yeah. as a, of course it's a long way, right? Yeah, long way. And I could not say much, but I can say that it's better than nothing, right? Better than you don't have anything. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yes. And of course you could not um, um, expect too much. Uh, and too soon, yeah. mm -hmm. and of course, um, you. I mean, as uh, similar to ourselves, uh, the government and us, uh, similar in the sense that we just need to do our best uh, to make it better, because we don't know what is the best. Um, some people, they might think that this is the best, uh, but after a decade passed through, and then, well, it's not the best anymore, right? We live in the world that, uh, I would say, uncertain and risky, yes. change every day. So uh, what we need to looking for is not the best option, the best policy, but sound policy in the situation at hand and, and we need to learn along the way and adjust and you know uh, change what you can change but if you could not it doesn't mean that you stop it right you just keep going it's like uh, it's a pathway towards something yeah. but it's very interesting i mean i want to know more about this it's very interesting and i think uh, Myanmar have a lot of hope and by future and even uh, I would say uh, your country very diversity yeah. but um, with the federation system it can uh, initiate different um, initiatives for different part, you know, and you can learn from each other. Yes. You're very lucky because here in Thailand, uh, it's no, it's just a very small space to learn. Uh, every city every local autonomy actually do the same uh -huh. because the liquidation because of you know we don't have the license to fail we don't have the license to learn uh -huh. but you uh, this part do this this part tie this and, you know. beautiful i think yeah 
very happy to hear that you try to go in that way. But to be honest, um, if the plan just transfer the idea of inclusiveness in sustainable development goals, the SDG, is not really um, well, it's something, right? But um, it's a kind of one side fit all, you know, it's, it look. Uh, the, the question that I raise is that you don't need to ask me, but you need to ask your people. You, not, not your people, but different sectors, different stakeholders. What does it mean by inclusiveness for them? And the possibility to make it happen. Yeah. And it doesn't mean that you need to chip your country. You just need to transform, you know, uh, or even make a transition uh, in some area. You can go for healthcare, you can go for agriculture, whatever. Mm. Yeah, but when you're talking about inclusiveness, it means that you have a kind of a, um, a better society for sure. Better, yeah. Not sure the best, but better for sure. Uh -huh. And when you have a plan, it means you have a hope, right? Uh -huh. um, sorry, uh, just to add to what Lady said, uh, as, as I said in the beginning, on papers, mm -hmm. we usually have everything about this, this thing written. I think the major challenge being Just for example, when, uh, when we are looking into this list, um, if we try to, uh, there, there are a lot of complications that we have developed ourselves as human beings in the society. When, you, when we go through literatures, if we try to adopt, if we try to accommodate religious groups, or if we try to uh, accommodate gender, or if we try to accommodate victims of gender violence or homeless, like you say, uh, we would still be incomplete with what we are trying to do because if we try to uh, accommodate religious groups, uh, we would, on one hand, should be able to defend that, yes, we are trying to divide, or we understand that the world is divided into religions, and that's why we are trying to include that. So, uh, so we, we are not trying to follow the whole humanistic goal that SDG is also talking about, mm -hmm. the same. Mm -hmm. and, and then we are trying to include mm -hmm. that. So uh, there, there are a lot of complicated issues that mm -hmm. that we have come up with ourselves, mm -hmm. with, with 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 our government, with our governments, and with our operations operations mm -hmm. that have come up since mm -hmm. gone. So, uh, like you said, yes, mm -hmm. transformation is there. But again, transformation is that. Uh, for example, let's take about the MDGs that were set before SDGs. Mm -hmm. If we look into the literature around 1997, 1998, when it was first pointed. Uh, I mean, first MDG was MDG goal one was to eradicate poverty, that they wrote in the beginning, mm -hmm. which was later revised, mm -hmm. saying that, oh yeah, somebody realized that, oh shit, poverty cannot be eradicated, yes. so why not we change the world? And then, then we came up with to alleviate. And uh, following uh, the same in SDGs, now, now we are again saying that we want to decrease, or to, 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 uh, to, to alleviate the poverty. We are not actually fighting poverty. We are only trying to see that, okay, let's let's try to see that somebody <coughs> does not feel somebody is poor. But mm -hmm. I have said in mockery terms many times, even when we have been discussing, I will say even a millionaire is a poor. Oh, very because, interesting, because, yeah. Because really, there is something called relative poverty. Really a millionaire is a poor in front of a billionaire. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it's a reflame of the interpretation of uh, what does it mean by rich and poor, right? It's very interesting. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> mm. But again, uh, yeah, I, I think uh, for me, um, the UN discourse, the international discourse, uh, SDG or something else, is just kind of uh, the tool for us to bargain, to negotiate, or even to play in the small boundary that we have in our own context. If 
I connect to SDG and that's make my government listen to me, I gonna go for that. But plan, for example, no anywhere, no even one sentence talking about democracy in SDG. Because SDG is a kind of the framework that <coughs> they hope that everyone could agree with it in, in the whole world, right? Yes. But our contract has specific challenge. The problem at the moment in Thailand, I mean, if you buy, you, you still feel, I mean, even you buy, you still feel that no freedom at all. Okay, not, not, not no freedom at all. Some freedom, at least I can say something in this room, right? But, um, no, I agree to you, Professor. Yeah. The, the meaning to no, 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 don't call me Professor, that shit. <laughs> 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 and that's the, actually create some hierarchy here. Yes, yeah, because, yeah. Uh, see, if you, if you look into documents of Robert Chambers in 1994, uh, uh, mm -hmm. he says that, okay, democracy is something when, when you have your rights, when you can enjoy your rights, and the meaning has evolved way a lot coming right. to this time. When the when in the latest when Amartya Sen has said that okay democracy is freedom, so you have freedom of choice, you have freedom of well-being, you have freedom of expression, everything mm -hmm. coming in. Mm -hmm. So even even the meanings have evolved in 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 these two decades mm -hmm. when we are trying to work. So mm -hmm. I really think uh, inclusive. This will this will. I mean, we, we, we will see this word, uh, th this, this is a very, very popular word. This yeah, is, yeah. This it's a very populous word. Uh -huh, uh -huh. So we, we will see this word in almost all the documents that we have. Mm -hmm. The only, only challenge being, mm -hmm. what are we doing with it? Uh -huh, yeah, and exactly. How, how to implement it? Yeah, but yes, I totally agree that uh, when we need, uh, when we take this on our hand, something that uh, we thinking about is that is this a productive discourse? Uh, productive in the sense that, well, if you say uh, democratic policy design, some people may, uh, you know, of course, the government might want to uh, come to the room and want to learn what I try to say in this room, right? So actually, everything is about the discourse. It's about the, but. The most important is the meaning you give into it. You make it meaningful. You shape it. But this is the space that you have in your academic world or even academic or practical world. I always put democracy into this because actually for me, it is a very important. And this is the next slide. The inclusive man is actually is democratic process. Yeah. Why we talking about inclusive policy design? The answer is very bad answer. It's what you say. What you say. Because this is a productive discord to allow people to come and actually it's not static. You can keep some meaning into it as well. You can add it on. I mean, it's for everyone here, I would say. That's why we need to discuss. Because this is not what I try to come and say, this is the checklist of the idea. Actually, this is the just platform for you to go beyond the problem that you see every day. Uh -huh. You can change the name. I'm very happy to see other names. <laughs> But for sure, friend, you could not say something that people don't want to hear, right? Uh, yes. True. Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. it's just like, I mean, uh, about national policies of the United States. Uh -huh. Let's see, they have been talking about democracy always. Mm -hmm. And if we listen to, we can, we can listen to speeches of U.S. presidents. <laughs> in, in, latest, in latest speeches made by Obama, mm -hmm. they say that they bombed in Syria to protect their democracy. Mm -hmm. So uh, they, they, they have yeah. been bombing, they have been bombing and uh, uh, they have been intervening into Palestinian territory 
just because their democracy is not there. So uh, even, even democracy, um, the, the United States is one such country who always says that they have been advocating democracy and democratic rights, but even for them, democracy is like, uh, with, with their investments in arms and ammunition every year, with more than 32 percent of GDP coming in, I think that that shows mm. how, how the meaning of democracy has also changed for countries like that. Yeah, and that is the, the real thing that happened everywhere. Um, as I addressed uh, the question about uh, um, inclusiveness in Myanmar, you know, the most important is uh, what your people give meaning into it. You know? And it's not only inclusiveness, it's also democracy. I don't know what should be the ideal framework of democracy or inclusiveness. But I know that this is a pathway to go beyond something. Now, I don't know that what does it really mean for democracy. And your democracy, your democracy, his democracy, her democracy, may be totally different. But what you can say is, now it's not democracy. <laughs> I mean, you miss it. You want to go beyond the situation at the moment. And that's why you need to find a productive discourse. You don't need to, uh, well, um, be a poem, could you just simply define it with one sentence? I don't want to come to do that. <laughs> Actually, I, want, I, I later want to huh, hear from you that what does it mean? in your own perspective. What does the inclusiveness mean to you and your country and your context, where you come from, right? Uh -huh. The specific challenge that you face. Uh -huh. But at least, I mean, the idea, uh, this guy is from Germany, and uh, he proposed the idea uh, what he called cell, you know, cell theory, and it's, this is very important uh, in my opinion. It means that before you thinking about doing something, you need to understand the social anatomy. Our society actually is look like a cell. No, 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 not look like a cell. Actually, it's like a lot of cell. In its nature, we have some people produce something, some people buy it in the market, some people is a retailer, we have some people work as a civil servant, some people work for the people as an NGO, we have social enterprise, we have uh, the rich, we have the poor, we have uh, uh, the boss, we have uh, employee, we have a lot of people in the society in different corner, but then actually in the long run, in the long term, we go up or down together. Uh -huh. The leash, he can leash until the day that he realized that actually he could not live with our other. I mean, it's not now, Flynn, it's a long time. <laughs> but in the long run, we go up or down together, for sure. Uh -huh. We could not extend, and you, you could, our society is not a one cell anymore. Uh -huh. We need to connect somehow to other people. The simple example is that the leash very rich, but in the end of the day, no any food product to eat. He passed away for sure. No farmer, he could not survive, right? So, this is the idea that why we need inclusive process. Because in the long run, 
we go up or down together. Yeah. And this is very important too. It's moved from uh, more exclusive to more inclusive. I really like the idea of more and least and most, something like this. Because I think everything is like the pathway towards something, right? The process is something that we can do. If you could not do something big, you can do something small. You can start with something like, well, you want to make a better education system here. You can create policy proposal for NIDA, future NIDA, not smart NIDA. <laughs> you can do that, right? For example, what we... Uh, um, and this is the way that it works. You need to thinking about, well, who you need to engage, right? The participant. And what kind of the discussion, the decision mode, right? And what power that they have into the forum. It doesn't mean that if you... Go for this. Everyone come and you will create a meaningful participation. It doesn't mean that. Because when a lot of people come, of course, it doesn't mean that everyone can have a chance to discuss in the forum, right? Because too much people. So they just come to, you know, maybe express the people in or maybe just listen. Or maybe just learn from the forum. Uh -huh. But if you just invite some people who are kind of a key stakeholder and you give the, uh, some degree of author authority to them and they have a chance to bargain, you know, to negotiate or something. So before you organize the public forum <coughs> or mini public to create the policy, thinking about the process, you might need to thinking about three dimen dimensions like this. Yeah. <coughs> and I, I found um, a lot of cases that very interesting. Has you ever heard about the city named Konkan? It's very interesting here. Yeah. It's in the northeast of Thailand. Uh, I might not go to the detail of the city, but I just want you to see that they have a lot of deliberative forum or participatory uh, process that they generate their policy and action or even their specific activity or even. You know. And it doesn't mean that they put everyone together in the big room, you know. They start with the small from uh, uh, insider to outsider. You know from uh, expert to lay people, you know, it's, and it's very interesting. Before it, they end up with the, um, the what they call the town hall meeting. <coughs> the town hall meeting is open for all, but before town hall meeting, they organize uh, a very, I would say, specific uh, mini publics, uh -huh. different mini public for different stakeholders, uh -huh. and end up the discussion with the town hall meeting from uh, outdoor to indoor or indoor to outdoor. I think it's very interesting, especially when you see the movement of the design from a small box like this to a bigger one, bigger one, bigger one, bigger one. You could not end the process with one forum for sure. I mean, one participate forum. You need to organize a lot of forum and connect them together, right? Mm -hmm. And this is very interesting in my, my opinion. It, it doesn't mean that it's perfect, you know, it's, but it, again, it's better than nothing, right? Yeah. It's better than the, they just do it by themselves. They ask people, they talk to people, and they put them together. From small to bigger. And also, this is what we do in Chiang Mai. 
as I already mentioned about the problem of haste, right? So we uh, organized the forum called Inclusive Haste Free Policy Design. Okay? A lot of people blame the mountain people cause the problem. So then we use the participatory mapping. We use the big map and invite a lot of people. Some people is a representative of political parties, some people from the public sector, the private sector, and edu educational institution, and civil society. Yeah. And we also um, ask them to go specific where the problem, where the, pollu uh, the pollution that you, uh, you saw, and what is the solution in specific area, in specific um, particular context. It's very big map, and each participant can put down the problem and the solution. And in the end of the day, we ask each of them to have uh, the red, the red uh, sticker free for it. Each participant has three stickers, and they need to walk around the whole map developed by different group and choose the best policy or the good policy that they think that we need to prioritize that. Uh, uh. Inclusive policy design, I understand that it comes from social inclusion. So we uh -huh. think about the people, right? Uh -huh. So for policy design, here we can see the government allows the people to participate. Uh -huh. That's why I'm talking about inclusive process. Yes. Inclusive means, and for me, it's the most important, actually. Yeah. And it's something that we can do. I mean, you can do. If you want to make the policy proposal, just step in and, you know, organize yes. from the from thing that you can do. <laughs> You don't need to thinking about policy as a kind of, uh, well, to cope with the climate change or the virus. Everything, policy is all around, you know? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, and you need to start it. Uh, you need to start it. At least, future Nida. Yeah. <laughs> Inclusive Nida, yeah, for example. Yeah. And then I think it's very interesting because in the end of the day, they vote for the sound policy that they need to prioritize. And it's very interesting that they walk around, we allow them for 10 minutes to walk around to see the different idea. And the one that most participants choose, proposed by the mountain people, I think this is very interesting. Uh -huh. hmm. Okay. We also organize, as I mentioned, it's not only one shop, right? It's like the previous example, the second time, the third time. Yeah. And in the end of the day, we propose this to the governor. Uh -huh. And it's legitimized somehow because it's a voice of. We, we call voice of Chiang Mai. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But not only the, 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 the solution, the local recommendation of policy proposal or policy brief, actually the process also become the learning process. It's not romantic, but somehow people learn that, well, it's not simple as they think. It's not just about someone burn something somewhere, right? It's more complex. Uh, than that. Uh -huh. And something that we also 
uh, did is about the idea of city of innovation in the same as San Francisco, I would say. But here in Thailand, if you're talking about innovation, every organization will say, well, this is not my responsibility. I take care of healthcare, I take care of uh, education, I take care of energy. Not innovation, it's not my, my responsibility. So, the inclusiveness, we <coughs> ask different agency to come and to discuss and to see the benefit of doing this and how they connect into this. It can shift from no one to everyone. In the end of the day, they realize that, well, innovation relate to everyone, you know. And it's very interesting that when we put together people from public organization and people from uh, private sector and people from uh, civil society organization, mm. okay, big problem with this. But it's okay. Um, oh, you can help me to what happened. Okay. Um, just a good photo, but I might put it. Uh, professor, can I ask some question? Um, is this project you did with the um, uh, NIA? Uh, yes. Yes. Yeah, and, and uh -huh. Ah. The, the process is about mm -hmm. designing a scenario or a or not? Uh, yeah, somehow, somehow. So yeah. um, uh -huh. when, when we talk about you know, like inclusive policy design, mm. we, um, does it mean that the kind of like majority like a scenario approach will be the core idea of this kind of process or policy design or not? Yes, I put it into my handbook as well. Okay. I totally agree. That's the foresight, the scenario right. is the best way okay. to include a lot of people together because everyone can share the dream okay. and positioning themselves into it. Exactly, I totally agree with that. Uh -huh. And uh, we have, uh, yes, as you mentioned, we have the agency from the central called NIA, National uh, Innovation Agency. But then we don't have any innovation agency in the area, you know. <laughs> and that's why we need to put people together, uh, different stakeholders together. Uh -huh. And you see, it doesn't mean that when you're talking about inclusiveness, you need to um, it's already, <laughs> I put many, uh, too many photos, I think. Okay, it's come. Yeah. You see, this is the way that we uh, start our discussion. We want to map the innovation ecosystem of the city. Different people in different sector, in different part of the city, come together and try to map the the connection between them and the contribution that they have into the discord of innovation, I would say. Mm -hmm. Innovation discord. Uh -huh. And this is a process that shift from no one to everyone. Uh -huh. Even civil society also come and it's very interesting that we also put the meaning into it as well. It doesn't mean that NAA flame and defy innovation this way and people here need to agree. We can redefy or reflame innovation in their own way that fit into the nature of the city in the same as you need to go back to Myanmar and defy, redefy inclusive net that fit into the context of your country. Same. Uh -huh. And here, the, they recognize that, well, 
It doesn't mean that when we're talking about innovation, it should be technology, right? It can be social innovation. It can be the new, the new way to solve the old problem. It simply is about the process, not only about the product, right? And 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 the new way to reframe the notion of innovation, it then become a kind of a, I would say productive discourse that collaborate uh, different sector or articulate different stakeholder uh, to the platform. Yeah. It's become the platform that welcome different sector. Well, you don't have any idea about technology. You don't have any experience really to start up. You're not a digital nomad. You're just the people in the community that are very active to solve the problem of your own community. You can still come to join us here because you're also innovator. Everyone can be innovator if you're ready to contribute to it. I mean, um, it's very interesting to organize such kind of thing and open your mind. And then you can learn a lot from the emerging idea, emerging relationship, emerging challenge, and, and so on. Okay. Hmm. I really like this one. Because it's not only about the, the platform that you allow the new generation to raise their voice. Because actually, it's somehow it's a prepared process. You already um, ask them to say something, and they prepare it from home. You know? it's, it usually happens. I mean, we live in a society that uh, everyone needs to prepare something from home. It usually happens. I, I don't have any problem with that because I think it's part of the culture. But it's a big surprise. I mean, a lot of surprise when you organize something like this. I'm there and she just addressed something about what she wants and she could not say this to her mother. I think it's very interesting. It creates space for kids to say something that they could not say it in front of their parents, you know, because the structure of the society, you know. I mean, wow, this is kind of, uh, it means that this space why you the opportunity to reveal what you want uh -huh. to the public. And it creates a safety environment for you to say, say it out. Uh -huh. And what she expect is that this <coughs> forum will give some uh, recommendation to their parents. <laughs> you know, it's kind of I, I think um, it's meaningful in its own way, especially if you guys know about the culture of my country, you know, about something that we're talking about democracy, but friend, you may not believe, know any democracy in family. <laughs> no, not at all, not at all, yeah, yeah. But then, uh, to do this, this is uh, the, the conclusion, but the most important, and actually is the, the essence of my talk today, is mean that we could not be the policy maker, the policy analyst, or the policy um, designer in the own in the old way anymore. We could not just simply uh, hear speaking to 
to power here. And just inform citizen here. And citizen, if they have problem, they just raise voice to the policy maker, to the power. But it's just simply speaking to, to power. It doesn't work anymore. You need to chip yourself from the old-fashioned policy analyst to the inclusive policy designer. Or think tank 2.0. You can say uh, 4.0 is okay. <laughs> but the new generation of think tank, the new generation of policy analysts, that I would call the inclusive policy designer. Mm -hmm. It means that you need to chip yourself to be a boundary spanner here. You need to connect. It plan the boundary. Articulate different sector, different actor, different stakeholder. Create the platform. And you need the new skill. You not e you you could not just simply have analytical tool in your head. It's not only it's important but not enough. If you're thinking about cost-benefit analysis, payoff metric, game analysis, or stakeholder analysis, or so on, you know, cost-effectiveness or something like that, so it's very important as the input for the discussion. But it's not everything. It's not the conclusion. It's just the input that you need. You need it. You need to have a subject expert and throw it into the forum. And you need to be a deliberative analyst. You need to connect people. You need to be a good facilitator. You need to be a good mediator. <coughs> and you need to be a new professional, that is the public engagement professional. If you have just only the old mindset of policy analyst have your own uh, knowledge and you think that you is the expert, you is a professional, you know the best. And when you need to organize the forum and people, no one come, you could not say that, well, people inactive, people very passive, people <coughs> Actually, you need to ask yourself. The problem is your skill set. You don't have public engagement professional. You could not build trust to people. You could not convince them to see the importance of the forum. Yes, friend, it doesn't mean that, um, yeah, I agree, some people, they don't want to come. Very, very, um, yeah, I'm busy, I'm stuck with my life. But again, it doesn't mean that what I discuss here is about offline, right? You can use online platform, you can, a lot of material, a lot of tool, a lot of instrument that you can use. But the most important is you need to have a skill set of public engagement. And when people come together, you need to play the very important role as a facilitator. Not the expert, not the professional anymore, but the one who can allow people to speak out. So after the end of the process, you have a policy proposal. You need to plow because this policy proposal conform all of participants. You need to chip from plow that is this your proposal to this is the proposal, the life form, all of participant. I think this is the new way of think tank, the new way of policy. Analyst, 
which I prefer to call policy designer. And the theory and the approach, the handbook, the tool, uh, for example, uh, design thinking, uh, critical thinking, future thinking, all of them could not guarantee that you will be a successful inclusive policy designer. We don't have a technical tool, the step-by-step -step tool to do this. This is all about learning, doing and learning and doing. It's about kind of um, <coughs> art, not less than size. No. Some of you may think that, well, from this, the study of public policy and public administration doesn't matter anymore because it's about art, it's not about size. But no, Flynn, you need to practice it. You need a sandbox to do this. Start with inclusive NIDA, for example, or future NIDA, whatever. Mm -hmm. And of course, you need to have a very good mindset, mm -hmm. the inclusive mindset. And that mindset could not develop automatically. Actually, you need to learn. I mean, that's why you come here and we discuss about this. And after you agree, after you see that, well, this might be the better way to do a policy, you know, then you will have a very strong attention and intention, I would say to make this happen, yeah. to practice this, and not only call the technical tool as your professional life, but your professional life need to include deliberative skill, need to include facilitative skill, meditative skill, and public engagement skill. In the end of the day, you may have a very bad policy outcome. You may have a very bad policy structure. But what at least you can do is policy process, the inclusive policy process. At some point, If you work for the think tank, for example, after you graduate here and you, um, most of think tank have any chance to do this, have a chance to do this for sure. You, uh, for example, your friend already mentioned about NAA. We also get a support uh, from NAA to do this, but. We use this opportunity to make difference, right? Yeah. You go back to your department, to your ministry. Of course, you could not just ship the world, but you can start with something on your hand. You, you can start with the inclusiveness of your staff in your small unit. Yeah. This is not about the um, utopia idea. This is about the pathway towards something better. Yeah. And the most important of this approach is doing. You need to do something. Because what we already experience at the moment will lead us to something Worse and worse and worse. Uh -huh. Okay. 
Okay, and then we have 15 minutes for discussion. Okay. Uh, should, should we call this as a inclusive policy design or deliberative policy design? Just according to your thought, just uh -huh. download the paper yeah. via please rename it as a deliberative policy design. Uh, so, de deliberative policy analysis right. is the inclusive policy process, but we have uh, four dimensions, right? We have inclusive uh, mindset, inclusive structure, inclusive uh, end, and this is inclusive mean. What, what uh -huh. is the, the, the abstract um, name of, of the four things? Yeah. I, I call it inclusive policy design because I want you to look at the whole uh, five dimension. But in this dimension, yes, we should call it deliberative policy analysis. Okay. Uh -huh. Actually, it's kind of uh, deliberation and participation. And deliberation is better because it means that you're talking about meaningful participation, right? Because nowadays, when we're talking about participation, it can be just voting, for example, or it can be just kind of public hearing, right? But deliberation is mean that you need to develop the meaningful participation. Uh, yeah, I agree. Yeah. For the inclusive mean, we need to go for deliberation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. I know that, uh, yeah, I mean, it's a bit difficult to explain about um, what is this, what that, and because actually um, my own theoretical background is uh, critical realism, I would say. That mean I see everything as a discourse. And the most important for me is you need to keep a meaning into it. We call, we call the approach as constructivism. But, of course, one thing that we need to note in our mind, we need to make difference. We need to go beyond the traditional technocratic policy analysis and design, I would say. We can go with that, but we still need to add something into that. Okay, it's kind of... Uh, um, I don't think I come here to give a lecture. I just, uh, it's kind of a talk that I think about it and uh, somehow backed up by some literature, which um, especially this literature. And uh, with this, I would ask you to go back to yourself and thinking about what you mean and what you uh, think, um, what you expect from uh, the new idea to be practices uh, in your own context. I mean, actually, I want to ask each of you, but we could not do that, right? Um, so, could I ask by country? For example, uh, Myanmar, do you see any opportunity or any chance to take this? I mean, not only the idea, but also maybe some technique, some tool that we use, part participatory mapping or uh, networking or other things. Uh, use in your own country. And then Nepal, and then Bangladesh. Do you think anything here can be uh, 
uh, at least inspire you to do something better in your context. You have already the plan, so what you want to suggest more about that? It's perfect. Yeah, perfect. Oh my God. <laughs> from, from any dimension, it's right. Ah, perfect. okay. You know, it's trying to align, align with the ASEAN, mm. align with the SDGs. But you know, even the SDGs, by 2030, we are not sure if we can achieve that kind of 17 goals or not. Uh -huh. Because the, our approach is really questionable. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, well, a lot of the uh, friends from Myanmar here. Do you think anything that you can take from here to make something better in your context? No? Mm -hmm. It's not that far enough. Well, inclusive, so we have, to, we have to do inclusive and general policy design is a, a kind of trade-off. So according to this, Mm -hmm. you know, which one the government have to put in priority? Because effectiveness or that, that kind of equity, equality, whatever. Yeah. But uh, maybe in step by step, mm -hmm. it can be inclusive. Mm -hmm. But whenever, uh, when we look at our um, policy they already made, the government and also the technocrat, they already consider in every aspect uh, the stakeholders but they do not put in the discussion, the public, in, in their discussion. But they, uh, they think in, instead of, you know, they think by themselves and make a policy. It's a kind of, mm -hmm. but in maybe we have a, a kind of state, state, states and regions. So maybe step by step we can do it. Because mm -hmm. we have a, a representative from each state and division, right? Mm -hmm. And kind of a vote. And when we have a kind of role, we have a state and uh, states and states and region parliament or something like that. Okay. So they can lead that mm -hmm. kind of thing in the mm -hmm. future and make mm -hmm. a policy on their own. Okay, so it's the but for the nation yeah. is maybe it takes time. Uh, yes, yeah, so of course it takes time. time. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. step by step. Okay. Uh -huh. So mostly focus on the change of the mindset. Uh -huh. Yeah. So uh, how about you? I just want to make sure that this is not a, a kind of a, a waste of your time in this afternoon <laughs> because you could not take anything. Yes. Yeah. Maybe just, well, anything here that inspires something? Or, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, actually, in, uh, inclusive policy design is, uh, I mean, it's really in Bangladesh, mm -hmm. kind of. Some not theoretically, not maybe not this way, but uh. because uh, it's been two decades since uh, our villages started to uh, formulate like participatory budget. Probably have uh, uh, so uh, participatory it's, budgeting. Yes, it's available in textbooks as well as reference of Bangladesh and Brazil. Yes, in, in India, yes, yes. So mm. after that. Uh, Government started different groups or uh, different mid of mid different classes of people or mm -hmm. different prof profession in making any policy. Uh -huh. Most of the time, but uh, sometimes definitely government itself imposes uh, policy on <laughs> other yeah like without con consultation as well. Uh -huh. Yes, um, participatory budgeting is also. Uh, good process uh, for inclusive means. I mean, it's a good example for inclusive means. But uh, could I add the question about the structure there? Do you have a problem about class, a problem about power, 
relation, the problem about um, the cultural recognition in your country? Uh, power is definitely a problem. Uh, Class? No. It's no? Not okay. major, it's not that major problem. But uh, yes, power in terms of political power uh, is a problem, definitely. Okay. Because uh, <laughs> it's my culture, a country's culture, it's political culture. Mm -hmm. It's like that. Uh, everything depends on ruling party and people of ruling party, even in villages, mm -hmm. they try to get everything or mm -hmm. they try to impose their mm -hmm. decision on, uh, like in rural people, even common men, they want to impose mm -hmm. something. So, power is kind of problem. Yeah. Okay, okay. So, uh, the last one, yeah. I, I know uh, some of you may come from other countries, but mm -hmm. we have only three yeah. country that uh, yeah, I'm so sorry about that. Uh -huh. um, before I start, I would like to ask you, Professor, one thing. Uh, no, no, not Professor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. Can we get this slide? Uh, yes, of course, we'll leave it here. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, <laughs> because. Um, That's it? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because uh, I'm currently writing an article on uh, governance and sustainable development. So. Hmm. Um, Actually, quite uh, reflective on what mm. I'm trying to do. Okay, uh, so in your country, right? Yes. I'm trying to make it more generic, ah, uh, ah, irrespective ah. of country. Okay. So, trying to come up with um, mm. something like a conceptual flow based on the theory that came So, uh -huh. uh, that's why um, mm. I'm, I'm, I'm more looking forward to last two or three slides where you have the conceptual flow built in. Okay. And so okay. I, I, I would just try to have uh -huh. a more good look mm -hmm. on that and work okay. further. Regarding mm -hmm. my country, inclusive practices, uh, I have been very critical and vocal about this. Yeah. It's telling, good. It's good. You I need to I be. I've been telling it since the beginning. On yeah. papers, uh -huh. very good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the it's rest, it's very important. When you're talking about inclusive policy design, you could not simply thinking about it without critical perspective. You need to put the critical perspective into it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So good, I mean, good. Uh -huh. it. On paper is very good. Uh -huh. Like she said, on paper uh -huh. it's perfect. Uh -huh. It's perfect on papers. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And the, the only problem is when it comes to the market. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh -huh. So, um, and, and, and for that, I think, um, uh -huh. I don't know, mm -hmm. something with inclusive, uh -huh. I think there is some innovation that has to come in. And innovation is not just, uh, usually when you say innovation, people think mm -hmm. of technology. ICT, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Yeah, but with innovation, I mean the innovation, mm -hmm. innovative mindset yes. mm -hmm. that we actually need. Um, can we, can come from indigenity okay. of people, indigenity mm -hmm. of our mm -hmm. traditions, cultures, mm -hmm. can be a part of it. Uh, mm -hmm. But not necessarily technology mm -hmm. coming into role. So uh, my bottom line would be in my country also mm -hmm. on papers you're really good mm -hmm. executions. Mm -hmm. uh, there are a lot of problems: mm -hmm. um, power, religions, class, everything. Mm -hmm. All the problems that you can think of, mm -hmm. everything is there. Mm -hmm. But on papers, everything is good. Okay. You are so from Myanmar, right? No, I'm from Cambodia. Cambodia. Oh, forget about Cambodia. I'm so sorry about this. Yeah. Okay, okay. Keep going. Yeah. Yes, we call us the cultural play, and like Myanmar and Cambodia, I see the national policy.